What's up everyone, it's Frank from 5AM Ramen here and today we're in Akihabara. Akihabara is known for anime, electronics and video games, but they've also got some top-notch ramen restaurants. Today I'm introducing my favorite Akihabara ramen restaurants. And at one of them, we're jumping into the kitchen and the master chef is going to kindly create two of his wildly different ramen for us. They're both very unique, inspired by Japan's island of Kyushu. One is thick, sweet and spicy and the other, chicken savory ramen. Let's take a deep dive in Akihabara's deep ramen scene, starting now. For those of you new to 5AM Ramen, this channel is for ramen fans or those who want to learn more about ramen. I'm regularly bringing you the best ramen info directly from Japan. I grew up in Tokyo and was raised on ramen myself. So, back to Akihabara. Akihabara is located in North Tokyo and is well known for its otaku culture or geek kind of hobbyist culture, including anime. While the neighborhood has changed quite a bit in recent years, it still retains its otaku heart. Akihabara is also home to some of the best ramen in the country. It's definitely a ramen gekisenku or ramen battleground. Before we head over to Ataria Shokudo, our main ramen shop for the day, I want to introduce Tanaka Sobaten, where I'll be having my warm up bowl. Tanaka Sobaten is a ramen chain, but a small one at that. They're one of the top tier ramen groups in Tokyo and in the country. And interestingly enough, their Akihabara branch on some websites is actually ranked higher than their Honten or their flagship shop in the Rokucho area of Tokyo. Their main ramen is inspired by the area of Kitagata, Kitagata ramen, but with a shio or salt seasoning. The pork bone broth is deliciously fatty. But today, I'm going with their Yamagata Akayu, or spicy miso ramen. Unlike Sapporo miso ramen, there's a big ball of miso featured prominently in the middle. And here's what it looks like and me diving in as we've just arrived. The miso ball adds zing to the fairly rich soup and the aonori seaweed on the side adds a sea-like flavor. Like their shio-based chuka soba, the one I was talking about earlier, the same thick noodles with a lot of water in them have a fun, bouncy texture. Great way to start the day. So, I just finished up my warm-up bowl at Tanaka Soba. Sapporo miso ramen is the most famous miso ramen style, but Yamagata does a mean style as well. And Tanaka Soba is a great place to try it. That dramatic red ball of miso in the middle it kind of dissolves into the broth, and as you're eating it more and more, the broth gets spicier and spicier. Awesome bowl. I love those thick and slippery noodles, and the broth is just rich enough. Amazing bowl. For reference, here's another great ramen shop in the Akihabara area, Motenashi Kuroki, one of the best shio bowls in Tokyo. I think I'm gonna have to do another Akihabara ramen video in the future, as there's too much good ramen here to squeeze into one video. Anyways, back to the ramen mission at hand. Now I'm making my way over to the main attraction for the day, the main course at Ataria Shokudo. And we're going to see him prepare two of his signature ramen right there in the kitchen. And of course, I'll be sampling and describing them for you. I have arrived. Ataria Shokudo is among Akihabara's top ramen shops, and I have a huge soft spot for the ramen here. Owner Sakamoto-san is from Miyazaki down in Kyushu, and his ramen are all about Kyushu ingredients and the recipe is coming directly from his family's ramen shop down there. First up is the chicken-centric Miyazaki ramen. Here's Sakamoto-san prepping it. Seasoning, soup, noodles, and toppings. Okay, so round one, I have the Miyazaki ramen in front of me. And I'm gonna start with the soup. So good. It's shio or salt season, so you've got a nice undercurrent of that salty kind of uh, base. But on top of that, there's a wonderful chicken flavor coming from chicken bones that have been boiled for a relatively long period of time. Not as, let's say, like thick and rich and creamy as maybe like tori paitan can get, but just rich enough, playfully existing alongside that uh, salty base. And this is actually a recipe that was passed down from Sakamoto-san's father to him. So there's history in this bowl here. The noodles are relatively thin and they really soak up that wonderful broth. In terms of toppings, we've got nice slices of chashu pork with just enough fat on it. And the shashu pork is also marinated in the shoyu or soy sauce from Miyazaki. And it's a little bit on the sweeter side. They have a little bit of a sweet tooth down there. Mm. Great cut of pork, and you can definitely taste some of that sweetness when you bite into it. Now the other toppings include negi or spring onions, 
as well as a very thin bean sprouts or moyashi. Now in Tokyo, around this area, the bean sprouts are usually a lot thicker, but these are coming direct from Miyazaki. And you'll see this often in ramen, these thinner, smaller bean sprouts. Just enough crunch and they're not as in your face as the ones you find in Tokyo. Delicious, and it's got Miyazaki written all over it. This is just great. How do I describe it? Like, I think Kyushu soul food, just really great Kyushu soul food. Now I'm going to be moving on to the Rai Raimen, their signature most popular dish. Here we go, Sakamoto-san working his magic again. This Rai Raimen is not your typical ramen. It's really nothing like I've eaten before in the ramen world. Thick and sticky, sweet and spicy, and again, most definitely unique. This one also comes from Sakamoto-san's family recipe book in Miyazaki. Just like the Miyazaki chicken ramen, they also serve it at their ramen shop down there. And this couldn't be more different from the previous Miyazaki chicken ramen. Now, first thing I like to point out is that the bowl is different. It's actually like a suribachi, which is basically a bowl you use to grind things, like sesame, for example. And the idea is that since this has to have a thorough, thorough mix, this would be most appropriate. And that's what I'm doing right now, just giving it a thorough, thorough mix. Getting all those ingredients properly acquainted. Less of a soup, it's more kind of in between a soup and an oil. Therefore, I'm going to start with the noodles and look how thick those noodles are. These are champon noodles. Champon or Nagasaki champon is from Nagasaki, also in Kyushu, of course. And they're quite thick and softer than, let's say, your standard ramen noodles. Mm. So good. It's kind of sweet and spicy at the same time. It's sweet because Sakamoto-san is actually using the same Miyazaki shoyu or soy sauce that's on the sweeter side. And what he's adding is spice or Japanese togarashi spice. So it's a little bit sweet at first and then that spice kind of hits you right after. And other ways that it has Kyushu written all over it include satsuma age as toppings. Well, these are basically fried fish cakes from Kagoshima, which is right next to Miyazaki Prefecture. And these two are a little bit on the sweeter side. If we look at the rest of the toppings, we've got seasoned minced pork, also nida, which are added at the very end so they maintain their texture, and onions. And all of these toppings come together in a thick layer of ankake at the very top. It's kind of thick and starchy. And when you mix it, that's when it's distributed alongside all of those uh, noodles. And it's all very well balanced because you've got nice crunch coming from the mizuna, also the onion pieces, and softer textures coming from the minced pork and also the satsuma age. Wonderfully balanced, delicious ramen. Now this one, the Rai Rai Men, is their top seller. Which one might you prefer? I would probably go 60-40. I think it depends on the mood I'm in. Both are excellent, but um, yeah, the Rai Rai Men is very special, so I would probably order this one more often than the chicken one. But of course, the Miyazaki chicken ramen is just as delicious. Either way, you can't go wrong. Ataria Shokudo serves superb Kyushu, or I should say Miyazaki soul food in ramen form. And in closing, here are a few words from Sakamoto-san himself. こんにちは。Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please smash that like button. This is Frank from 5am Ramen signing out and reminding you that Tokyo is the only city in the world where you can have amazing ramen at 5am. Thanks again for watching.